Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's great to see you here again. And today we're going to be talking about loudness here in DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to talk about what it is, how to use those loudness meters, because if you're like me, I didn't know what they were for, how to use them, but I'm going to tell you what they are, how they work and why they're important. So let's jump into the video. So loudness, what is it? Why is it important? Why do I even care? So for me, a long time, that was kind of a mystery and I just didn't have the time to do the research and check out what loudness was and why I should care about it. But one of our subscribers here, Pedro Diaz from Norway, had reached out to me in an email asking some questions about it and he had done a lot of research to figure out what it is, how it works, and why it's important. So I kind of piggybacked on some of his research, did some more research on my own, and now I understand what it is and I'm gonna share it with you guys because I've gotten questions from you guys and it's just something that until recently I hadn't looked into before. So what is loudness? So loudness is measured in LUFs. What's a LUF? I'm gonna throw it on the bottom of the screen here, but it is loudness units relative to full scale. So that sounds kind of confusing, but I'm gonna show you what it is here and why it's important to take a look at it with your videos, especially when you're uploading to YouTube. So YouTube has certain levels of loudness that they want your video to be at. And in YouTube's case, minus 14 LUFs is where they want your loudness to be at its maximum. Otherwise, what happens is YouTube will compress or squash down your audio. And I'm gonna show you some examples here of how we can see where our audio is falling in YouTube and if YouTube is squishing our audio down. And then I'm gonna show you how in DaVinci Resolve here, we can check that and see where we fall on that loudness scale. Because keep in mind that your faders and the way you set your volume in your editing program, whether it's DaVinci Resolve or anything else, is not the same as loudness. For example, if you boosted your fader all the way up to minus three, cause I heard, oh, YouTube should be at minus three to minus five. Well, it's not minus three to minus five total uh, decibels here on your meters. It's the loudness level that you're looking for. So it does sound a little confusing, but we're gonna jump over to the computer. I'm gonna show you how you can see whether your YouTube videos are getting their audio squashed down or whether you're getting the same mix that you mix when you're editing the video, if you get the same thing on YouTube or not. So let's jump over to the computer and uh, we're gonna walk through some examples here. I'm gonna show you some more about how loudness works. And then I'm gonna show you in DaVinci Resolve how you can change a couple settings and see where your loudness actually falls. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna take a look at here is a video sample that I uploaded where I purposely went above that negative 14 luff level so that YouTube would have to squash down my audio. So here's a little clip filmed with my iPhone and I'm gonna play through it, you can see how it sounds, and then I'm gonna show you how you can check the loudness and whether YouTube squashed down your audio or not. What's going on guys, here is a clip I'm gonna throw up on YouTube, I'm gonna boost up the loudness and make it too much so that we can see how YouTube squashes down the audio a little bit. So here's our sample clip, check it out, check out the stats for nerds and see what we got. What's going on guys? All right, so in order to check it, if you come to any video on YouTube and you just right click on top of the video, come down to stats for nerds and it brings up a bunch of different information here and here you can see volume slash normalized so the volume is what you had your video set at when you uploaded it so that's always going to be 100 percent now normalized is telling you did youtube normalize your audio because it was over their threshold of minus 14 luffs and in this case you can see out of the 100 percent of my audio that i uploaded and you can see that youtube normalized my audio on this video 65 percent of the original volume that I had uploaded at because it was over top of that minus 14 LUFS threshold. So now if I come to another video here and I wanna check where is my audio on this video, come down to stats for nerds, and here volume slash normalized, you can see 100% of my volume and I'm at 100% for the normalization. And you can see the content loudness is minus four dB. So I believe this means I'm four dB below that threshold of minus 14 LUFS. So how can we check this in DaVinci Resolve to make sure that what we're editing in DaVinci Resolve is exactly what's gonna come up on YouTube? So we're gonna jump back here in DaVinci Resolve and right up here, we have our loudness meters. And if I just play through a little bit of the clip here from the camera, it sounds like junk. We can see that the meters are moving, but I don't actually know what they're referring to or how they're working. So the first thing we wanna do is set our loudness meters to that minus 14 LUFs that YouTube requires. In order to do that, you wanna come down to your project settings and you wanna come down to Fairlight. Under audio metering, you'll see target loudness level. 
And the default here in DaVinci Resolve is minus 23 LUFs. We want to change that to minus 14 LUFs, which is what YouTube allows. So once you change that, come down and click save. So one thing that you want to keep in mind when you're looking at these meters here is that zero is that minus 14. Zero doesn't equal zero. Zero equals that minus 14 that we just set. It's a little confusing, but that's the way they do it. So now just looking at these meters isn't enough for us to determine where our LUF level is at. So we need to bring up a graph that'll give us a better idea of where all of our audio is falling here in our video. So in order to do that, the first thing you want to do is come down to this little icon here. You want to go ahead and click on that. Next, come over to your index, open up your index, and down here you're going to see main one. And that's our main output from DaVinci Resolve. So you want to go ahead and turn that on. Then you can go ahead and close your index. And if you scroll down on your tracks here, you're going to see now we have main one, which is our main output. So it doesn't look any different than the rest of the tracks. But if you grab the very bottom of that track and you pull it down, you open it up and you'll see a few more bits of information here. You have loudness history. And we want to go ahead and turn that on because this is going to give us a graph that shows us the loudness of our video. And below that, you have three more items. And the integrated one here is the important one that you want to have checked on. Momentary and short term, you can look at those if you want, but they're not as important as this integrated one right here. So make sure that's checked on. So now when we come over and look at this graph, we see a zero here. So this zero represents that minus 14 LUFs that we set in the project settings. So we want our audio to be as close to that as we can get it without going over it. If we go over this threshold, that's when YouTube comes along and they normalize it down to that minus 14 LUFs level. So I'm going to go ahead and play through the video here and you're going to see where our LUFs are falling on this graph. I'll just show you real quick is recorded from the camera. It sounds like junk and I don't want to use it. I want to use the audio from the Blue Yeti. But here's what that sounds like. Here's the quickest way to sync up your video between your camera. All right. So I'm going to. OK, so that's enough to get us an idea of where we're at. So if this is the minus 14 LUFs, we're about six below that minus 14. So what this graph tells us is that we can actually boost the volume of our audio up a little bit to get closer to this line up here. So when you're first editing together your video, I would recommend that you set your audio levels similar to the way that I show in this video that I'm going to link at the top of the screen here, setting your audio levels. So you may have heard out there that YouTube says set your audio from minus three to minus five and somewhere in that range. Well, they're not referring to minus three to minus five. If we look back here in DaVinci Resolve, not minus three to minus five on your fader here. What they're actually referring to is minus three to minus five below that negative 14 LUFS level. At least that's my understanding of it. So when you initially edit your audio, check out this video above. I'll link to here of how to set your audio levels. You want to make sure you set all your levels at a reasonable spot and make sure nothing's peaking. You don't want to boost all these way up so that you get closer to this 14 LUFS. That's not the right way to do it, in my opinion. So edit your video, get a good mix, set your levels right. And then once you check your loudness here, I notice it's low, so I want to boost it up. So what I've been doing is I'll just come and boost up the master a little bit. So let's say if I boosted it up to five here and we'll start playing the video again and see where our loudness goes to. Delete that. So it's super easy to sync up my audio with my video. Select both clips. I'm going to right click, come down to auto sync audio. And I want to come down. I have two options that I always use here. It's called based on waveform and based on waveform and append tracks. So the first option, if you select that, it so you can see it's slowly climbing up. And this is a delayed um, response to the audio that's being played in the video. So the longer you play it, the more accurate it's going to be. But you can see it's getting up closer to that minus 14 LUFs. But typically where I've been set mine is somewhere between that minus three and minus six range. And I find that that works out pretty good. And YouTube does not normalize any of my videos. They all seem to be at 100% where it should be. So in this case, I might just lower it back down a little bit, but then I think this video should be good to go. So let's jump back to that example we saw on YouTube, and I'm going to show you how we can make an adjustment to that clip so that it falls at our negative 14 LUFs. Okay, so here's that clip that I exported and put on YouTube, and you can see here I purposely boosted up the main a lot. I boosted up uh, this individual track, and let's look at our meter here. It's already set up. This is minus 14 LUFs at this zero line. So let's play this, and you can see where it'll fall on the graph.
What's going on guys here is a clip i'm going to throw up on youtube i'm going to boost up the loudness and make it too much so that we can see how youtube squashes down the audio a little bit so here's our sample clip check it out check out the stats for nerds and see what we got so you can see i'm over that threshold by about 3.7 which is what it said in that stats for nerds back on this youtube video so how do we fix this so that this video will not be normalized and have the audio compressed and reduced so I'm just going to come over and start by double clicking on my faders here to reset that. I'm going to come back to the beginning of the clip and let's play through and see where it falls before I make any adjustments. What's going on guys? Here is a clip I'm going to throw up on YouTube. I'm going to boost up the loudness and make it too much so that we can see how YouTube squashes down the audio a little bit. So here's our sample clip. Check it out. Check out the stats for nerds and see what we got What's going on guys? Here is a clip I'm going to throw up on YouTube. I'm going to boost up the loud. So real quick, just to stop, the reason why it keeps coming down as I keep playing it over and over again is because the loudness history is based on the past 30 seconds. So because it's a short clip, I keep playing it again and again, and you can see the graph coming down, and um, we should hopefully drop below this minus 14. So let me continue playing it and see where it falls. Check it out. Check out the stats for nerds and see what we got. What's going on, guys? Here is a clip I'm going to throw up. And you can see we just entered into the blue area here and blue is where it's acceptable. It's below your threshold that you set in your project settings there. So blue is getting better. And like I said, the loudness history is the past 30 seconds, which is why we see it continuing to go down. So I'm going to give it another play through once or twice here and uh, see where we end up. How YouTube squashes down the audio a little. Okay, so I played through a few more times and now you can see I've got a consistent blue line here at about minus three decibels. So I'm going to go ahead and export this, throw it back on YouTube, and then we're going to check and see what the volume slash normalization is for this video and see how it compares now that we adjusted our loudness here in DaVinci Resolve. So that way our clip should be below the threshold that YouTube requires. So here we go. We're on YouTube. I'm going to play through the video. This is the new one I just uploaded. Let's play through it. You can hear how that sounds. And then we're going to check those stats for nerds. What's going on guys here is a clip i'm going to throw up on youtube i'm going to boost up the loudness and make it too much so that we can see how youtube squashes down the audio a little bit so here's our sample clip check it out check out the stats for nerds and see what we got okay so this is the new video let's right click come down to stats for nerds if we look at the volume slash normalized we've got 100 and 100 so my content loudness is minus 9.1 so I could even boost this up a little bit higher if I wanted to and get closer to that minus 14 luffs when I was back in DaVinci Resolve. But you can see here that YouTube did not compress or squash down my audio at all because I was well below that threshold. All right, guys, so there you go. Loudness here in DaVinci Resolve. Again, why is it important? It's important because you don't want YouTube to just come along and normalize your audio and squash it down. You want it to sound the way that you edited your video. You had a certain sound in mind. And you want to make sure that YouTube doesn't uh, mess that up or make it sound bad on you. So make sure you check out the normalization of your audio here in DaVinci Resolve before you go ahead and upload it to YouTube. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope I helped shed a little light on the subject. I know uh, for me, it was a great learning experience to kind of understand what it does and why it's important. So if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to help you out. Get out there, check out some of your videos, see how they're falling on the scale of Luffs, which is such a weird name. Why did they even call that? So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.